Glenn Ordway, popular radio host on WEEI in Boston, kind enough to join us. Uh, if I told you a week ago that Tom Brady was going to Tampa, you would have said what, Glenn? I would have said there's a possibility, Dan, but uh, the world is upside down. The bars are closed, the restaurants are closed, and the New England Patriots are now just like another NFL franchise. I mean, it's all foreign to us up here. Totally different. Uh, totally foreign. You're as connected with Bill Belichick as anybody in that market. Did you get any indication before this was happening? Uh, as you know, <laughs> in the dealings you've had with Bill, Bill doesn't give away an awful lot. The one thing I will say is I thought all along there was the possibility that Bill Belichick was looking at this and saying the problem was not the weapons we had around Tom Brady. The problem was Tom Brady. We didn't get enough of him during the course of the week. The elbow issue uh, presented a, a situation where Stidham was getting the reps on Thursday and Friday. And I would not be surprised at all, because people keep on talking about Dalton and all these other guys. I would not be surprised at all if Bill Belichick is watching Jarrett Stidham every day and he's looking at it and saying, this kid can play in the NFL. There's probably more to the story than we know. Do you think that Belichick wanted this situation? No, I think he wanted Tom Brady back. I think he wanted Tom Brady on a year-to-year situation because Bill – is very pragmatic. He looks at the uh, at, at statistics sometimes and odds. And let's face it, there's only one quarterback in the history of the National Football League that has won a game at age 43 or above, and that's Vinny Testaverde. He won two. Nobody has started more than eight games at age 43. I think Bill's looking at all of that information, and he's saying, okay, I love Bill. I mean, I love uh, Tom. He's great. He's terrific. He still can play at a pretty high level. But any day now, it could go south. And so I don't want to put myself in cap hell a year or two years from now and find out that six games into the season, the elbow goes, and Tom is not the same. I was wondering about the coincidence. Maybe it's a coincidence. Maybe it's not. I asked Chris Sims about this last hour that Tom goes from a coach who is polar opposite with personality, style, demeanor, everything about that. Is that just a coincidence in your opinion? I, I think it's a coincidence right now. I think it's something that, you know, Tom's probably talking about with his buddies today saying, hey, this might be kind of interesting, you know, kind of a, a looser atmosphere. On the other hand, there was nobody that was more disciplined and played into that structure of discipline than Tom Brady. He was pissed last year because he didn't think the rookies, the young kids, were, were serious enough. And so I, I think that he might be looking at it smiling today but let's see how it plays out you know once you get to to camp with all of this i really think it came down to tampa bay in that there weren't a lot of takers out there i think most nfl teams dan were looking at it the same way belichick was he wants two or three years at 30 million plus each year we're going to lock him in for three years at age 43 44 45 i think that's the biggest problem that patriots had here tom brady wants to play until he's 45 albeit the greatest player in the history of the game, but he wants to play at least 45. He also wants the love and respect of being that greatest player. And Bill Belichick is operating a franchise with a strict system of value, and every year we need to be competitive. Two different agendas. I don't think they meet. Who has more pressure on them going into this next season? I would say back here in New England, it would be Belichick. I'm not sure that's going to play out nationally. I'm already seeing that uh, Vegas – uh, I don't know how they're putting the odds up. They're closed, aren't they? But they're putting the odds up, and, and Tampa Bay's like the third highest on the board. People are going to talk about the Bucks having, you know, hosting the Super Bowl and yeah. actually playing in it. I think that's an awful lot of pressure. I really do for Tom Brady. I, 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 I look at it and say that Tampa Bay is now relevant. If I'm the Glaciers, I'm looking at it saying, we're now going to make an awful lot of money. We're selling season tickets at a huge rate. Many of them, by the way, are buying from New England. I've heard from those people. They're calling me up and they're telling me they're buying down there. And they're just <laughs> going to take the uh, flights back and forth. Were your fan also, base, were, you, were your fans upset yesterday? Was anybody angry about yeah. this? Yeah, a lot of anger. And who are they angry at? Well, I think uh, a lot of it was directed at Kraft. Um, you know Robert, a wonderful guy. I, he's been a great owner. He's a great business guy. And I think 
behind closed doors, he's looking at this as a business. He also wants to be loved and wants the fan base to love him. And he's hearing Stephen A. on ESPN yesterday kind of rip him and rip Belichick. And he calls him during the break and he says, be very clear, if Tom wanted to stay, then we would have worked it out and he would have remained a New England Patriot, but Tom wanted to leave. And we got a lot of calls of people saying, what is he doing? You know, and I do think there's something to that. But why are you trying to spin it yeah. right now in that direction? So he's taking heat. Belichick will take heat. The difference is Belichick, I don't think, will care about the heat. He knows that he's going to be judged on how the team plays over the next three, four, five years. And I think he's going to be around for the next five years. If I could give you Brady, Belichick, or Kraft to interview on your show, who would you take today? Uh, Brady. Okay. <laughs> Brady. Wait, don't you think Belichick would have an interesting take on this? No, he won't. He won't tell you anything, Dan. Okay, so what, what if you got? Is, what if you got question. total transparency? No. So you sit here and you ask him the question: <laughs> What happened? You know what Bill's going to say? Greatest quarterback of all time. He's wonderful. He meant everything to the organization. He's never going to reveal it. Okay. And I think even when he gets before the microphones in the next month or so, it would not surprise me if he says, I already made my statement. You read my statement. I still don't know about Malcolm Butler, so you're right. It's not, you know, I'm, I'm not going to get any, any dirt from him. Somebody's going to give us the back. There'll be a 30 for 30 on this eventually. Since we do a 30 for 30 on everything, there'll be a 30 yeah. for 30 on Brady, you know, versus Bill. And I guarantee you, he'll go to his grave never telling you what happened with Malcolm Butler. But see, I think the Patriots made the smart decision. You know, when, when Robert Kraft and, and uh, you know, they, you want to spin it now because you don't want to be the bad guys here. Hey, if Tom wanted to stay here. Well, the reason why Tom didn't want to stay there is you're not going to give him $30 million a year over the next three years. You, you made the decision for him. Brady did what you're supposed to do. I want this. You're not giving it to me. I'm leaving. Absolutely. And they wanted to change the offense on him because the offense is changing in the league right now. And I think they also want a cheap quarterback because if you look at Kansas City, Baltimore, that's how you do it. That's yeah. how Bill Belichick began this dynasty with a cheap quarterback that was in the sixth round. It allowed him to build the rest of the roster. The roster wasn't good enough last year, certainly the offense, with Tom Brady. And if Tom Brady gets that big money, you can't add a single soul to the offense. Where are you? Jared Stidham, your starting quarterback this season? I think he might be. I think all of this talk about going out and getting one of these guys, and I think you're going to find probably they'll bring, it, bring in a veteran. Looks like the supply outdoes the demand right now with all these available quarterbacks, Dan. So I guess he would bring in whoever's one of the last ones standing that's willing to come in real cheap. But I think he's going to try to go cheap, and that's 750000 bucks at quarterback. And that allows you, as Kansas City has done and Baltimore has done over the last couple of years, if you've got a cheap quarterback, uh, Jared Goff out in, uh, with the Rams, they were able to do it. Cheap quarterback allows you to build everybody around him. Glenn, thanks for joining us, and uh, good luck with the masses today. <laughs> you got it. Always thank, good talking to you, Glenn. Dan. Thank you, Glenn. Out of the boys. All right. One of our favorites, Glenn Ordway, WEEI Boston radio talk show host. 